neuropalliative care has been mainly focused in on the dementia and the movement disorder spaces um, specifically, and obviously it's growing, but you know, which areas do you feel as though there might be um, other potential? Uh, are there any diseases or things of that sorts that, you know, you may say to yourself that we haven't really jumped into this yet, but there could yeah. be future in there? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Uh, the, I mean, so I, and, and in my practice, so I, I see, as we say, movement disorders, dementias, ALS, uh, brain cancer, glioblastoma. I mean, those things are not not very surprising to anybody who, who thinks about it. Um, I think things that might be more more cutting edge. Uh, one is pediatric neurology, um, and, and there's some people. Uh, Lauren Treat at, at Colorado is is one of them. Uh, Paul Vermillion here at, at Rochester, uh, Audrey Foster Barber at UCSF that you may think about talking to in the future who are doing very cool things in the pediatric neuropalliative care space. Um, I wrote a paper uh, last year about epilepsy which I would say is very underexplored. And there's actually now a group in India that, that is working on that. But, um, you know, I, I think people don't think about epilepsy and palliative in part because they're, they're making this link between mortality. And for a lot of people with epilepsy, um, you know, their, their lifespan often is shortened, uh, but not in the same way as somebody with ALS. And, and they face a, a, a huge amount of challenges, uh, social, emotional, you know, like almost any of these things, it's like when you, when you stop to think about it, um, and particularly for people with pervasive uh, developmental delay in epilepsy who have adult caregivers, you know, the palliative care model makes perfect sense, but hasn't really been broadly applied yet. Um, so that, that would be, you know, an area, an area or space that I think that we definitely could provide more focus uh, to support people. Obviously, um, INPCS is a, is a great community. It's a growing community itself. But can you just talk a little bit about the relationship, um, specifically in the, the neuropalliative care space? between advocacy groups, patients, and providers, and how it sort of kind of fuels the whole community a little bit uh, together. Yeah, so we have very intentionally and purposefully, we have uh, people living with neurologic illness and families on our board. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it all, you know, in some ways it stems from the fact that, uh, that, that palliative care is person-centered care and it's family-centered care. And so we felt from the get-go that we would not be true to our mission if we did not include uh, people living with illnesses and their families as part of our board. And part of our philosophy is that we look to people living with neurologic illness and their families as experts. Mm -hmm. and, and they are experts who have a lived experience and they can, and they, you know, I can tell you from personal experience that they make our research better. Uh, they make our educational programs better. Uh, hearing the patient or the family voice in education uh, is much more impactful. Uh, they help us uh, stay true to our North Star uh, to make sure that we're moving forward in the right direction. Um, and I would say the grassroots uh, aspect of this really sh shouldn't be underestimated. Um, in Colorado, when I started my clinic there, the majority of the referrals I was getting at least early on were from support groups and from word of mouth more so than from my colleagues. Hmm. Um, and, and so people who have this lived experience get it. I think a lot more intuitively than people who are healthcare providers. And they also, I think, have a sense of urgency mm -hmm. uh, that healthcare providers and researchers and other people don't have. And I think that sense of urgency really fuels us in our work. 